Hello everybody, welcome to the 51 Yarns Spin Along. This is week 22, which is Energised Singles. For those of you who are returning viewers, welcome back. Uh, it's good to have you with me again. And for anybody who's new to this series, this is a series of videos that I do each week that corresponds with the topic that's running in the Ply Magazine Spin Along for this week. If you haven't come across that, um, essentially there's a topic for each week and if you spin along with it and you post a picture on Facebook, Ravelry or Instagram, you have the chance to win a year's subscription to Ply Magazine, which is very cool. Um, a little bit of kind of Ply Magazine related news at the end and it's not uh, pleasant news so I don't really want to start the episode with it, um, but I just want to kind of fill people in if they haven't heard this already. As a disclaimer, I am not affiliated with or sponsored by Ply Magazine in any way, shape or form. Uh, they don't pay me to make these videos. Um, I just use Ply Magazine as a resource and I just recommend it to other people because I personally find it useful. I think it's a really good resource. So this particular episode is probably going to be fairly quick because essentially energised singles just means singles that still have active twist in them. For those who are perhaps new to spinning singles to be actually used as singles, generally you would want there to be as little active twist in a singles yarn as possible because having active twist in there skews your stitches so they'll kind of go off on diagonals if you're not careful. So if you are spinning singles for use on their own, i.e. not being plied, then you would want to try to make sure that they are as active twist free as possible. Having said that, no singles yarn is a balanced yarn. People sometimes talk about balanced singles. There's always gonna be some degree of twist in there, so it's, it's not balanced. However, it can be close to balanced. Dexter, did you just bring me your mousey? Oh, aren't I lucky? I get the mousey. Would you like the mousey? Um, as I was saying, the resources that I used this week were, first of all, the actual 51 Yarns um, book. I also had a little dive into the Spinner's Book of Yarn Designs. Um, there's some information in there about energised singles and I also looked up a knitty pattern from quite a few years ago that I will link to in the description because it has an interesting pattern that makes use of energised singles so I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through. Essentially um, this was this is what I've got left of the bobbin that I produced. I took some scrap fibre I happened to have a small, very small bat that I'd carded. Thank you very much. Um, and I carded it up a long time ago. I had it still in my sash and I came across it and thought, oh yeah, that'll do, let me just spin that. With hindsight, benefit of hindsight being a wonderful thing, I would probably have used a more worsted preparation because one of the things that did go a little bit astray with this was that I did get some thin spots and I'll talk a little bit more in a moment about how that affects your finished um, yarn and your finished project but I think if I'd spun it from more worsted preparation then I probably would have had more consistent results. Sometimes as I was um, drafting the bats I was finding that um, there were little uh, bits of fibre that kind of stuck together. You know how it is. A bat is designed to be spun woolen and woolen kind of evens out when you ply it. Um, the, the difference in thickness isn't as noticeable in a woolen yarn, so that's why it's perfectly suited to that. However, I would, as I say, if I was doing it again, I would do it from a worsted preparation of some description. Um, doesn't have to be combed, hand combed top or anything like that, but commercial top would do the trick. 
So that was what I spun. Um, I spun it on my Shack Matchless with the high speed whirl and on a high speed bobbin. So it was on the smallest of the ratios that's possible on a matchless. And I was treadling medium fast. So I was putting quite a significant amount of twist in it. I would say you need to put at least as much twist in as if you were going to apply it, but probably even more than that as well. I was testing as I went through to see how much twist was in there just by taking some tension off um, the yarn that I was spinning and just seeing if it immediately tried to curl back on itself, then I felt like I was roughly in the right ballpark. And I just knitted it directly off the bobbin. No finishing, um, no resting on the bobbin, nothing. I literally just spun it and then knitted it straight away. And it was really interesting, actually. I've never knit with energized singles before and it was actually really fascinating <laughs> because I just knitted a swatch that was 20 rows alternating of stocking stitch and reverse stocking stitch. And this is what it came out like. <laughs> and it's kind of fun because um, all of the all of the stitches kind of slant across. It's almost like you were using some kind of stitch pattern of increases and decreases to make it go like that, but actually you're just using the energy that's contained within the yarn. I thought it was actually quite fun. I quite enjoyed it. It had loads of active energy while I was knitting it, but this is the blocked version. And as you can see, it does, it does hang straight in the sense that, you know, it's not actively trying to curl back on itself. There are definitely some places where there are th some thin spots and those have real kind of tight corkscrews in them because if you haven't come across this, thank you Dexter for my mousy, thank you darling. Um, if you haven't come across that before, when you spin the twist goes directly to the places where the yarn is thinnest. So the thinnest areas of this yarn are always going to collect the most twist and that's what happened in those areas where I do have little corkscrews going on. But I would say overall it was actually fairly successful um, in terms of the consistency of the yarn. There are definitely some sort of thicker sections but as I mentioned it was from a bat and so I'm not entirely surprised that there were some thicker and thinner sections. And yeah, in short, that was actually quite interesting. It's another one of those things that I sort of think I'm not sure how much I would actually use that. But if you were looking for some projects to try out, the singles issue of Ply Magazine, which I think was winter 2015, maybe? Um, the singles issue of Ply Magazine has a project in there that is to do with energized singles. There are also a couple of knitty patterns which use energized singles, including things like a shawl where you use this um, slanting to actually kind of create the shape. So that's a, a really, really interesting one if you are looking for something to do with your energized singles. But yeah, as I was knitting with it, I actually thought, yeah, this is actually quite cool. I quite like this. As you know, I'm not really a huge fan of art yarns, but this isn't really an art yarn as such. It's just a normal yarn. You're just working with the fact that it's going to have that skew and you're using that skew as part of the design. So I think it's quite an interesting thing to try out. Um, I would definitely say it could be useful to have in your sort of armory of different yarns that you can spin. The main things that I picked up from that experiment really were trying to keep it as consistent as possible because definitely the areas where it's less um, soft and, and smooth are the areas where there's more twist because it was thinner. So try and keep it consistent. Try to put in 
at least as much twist as you would put in it if you were going to ply it, but I would say even more than you would normally use to ply. And when it comes to using it, I would probably either look for something that is specifically designed to use an energized singles or make your own thing up. Just keep in mind that you are going to have that slanting. And what you could do and what the, uh, the knitty shawl that I saw, what they did was they had one energized singles spun with S twist and one with Z twist and then they used it on opposite sides of the shawl to make it skew in different ways. Whereas all of mine was spun um, Z twist. All of mine was spun clockwise, so Z twist. And I just used stocking stitch and reverse stocking stitch to create the different skews as opposed to actually spinning two different yarns. Once it's blocked, I, I was kind of expecting that it would be quite a harsh yarn, that it wouldn't feel very nice. But actually, once this has been blocked, it actually feels really quite nice. It's fairly soft, not particularly squishy, I wouldn't say, um, but fairly soft and definitely nowhere near as harsh as I thought it was going to be. And so, yeah, it was quite a quick experiment this week. Um, I would definitely encourage you to try it and to sort of open your mind to the possibilities of energized singles. Um, so before we end the episodes, um, some of you who follow my Instagram account might be aware that uh, JC Boggs Faulkner, who is the editor of Ply Magazine, um, lost her mum this week. So the first that we heard was an Instagram post from Bernadette Emerson, who's the photographer of Ply Magazine. Um, and they were trying to raise funds to get, first of all, a private detective, but also to get JC and her brother out to Belize, where her mum was living. They raised a fantastic amount of money. So, uh, you know, thank you to everybody who contributed. Very, very sadly, JC's mum's body was found, I think, yesterday. It, it's horrific. I, I just can't imagine, you know, what she's going through right now. So, yeah, my thoughts are with JC, her brother Matt, and anybody else who, who knows the, the family. Um, it's just a, a really horrific thing to happen. And so also please bear that in mind. I know I've seen recently some posts on the Ravelry group for Ply Magazine sort of saying, you know, what's going on with the 51 yarn spin along. Uh, please just bear that in mind that it's a very, very difficult, sensitive time for all of the Ply Magazine team right now. So um, give them a rest, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, with that very, very sad news, um, I'm going to end the episode here. Next week is the Fractal Week, which I've already started spinning for and I've filmed a fair bit as I've been going along. So I hope this episode has been useful. Um, in between now and the next one, you can find me on Instagram as Tiny Fibre Studio and on Ravelry, I'm Ibex. I hope this episode's been useful and I will see you again in the next video.